All right, Dragon Ball lovers, we are on to the next episode of Dragon Ball Super. This is episode 19, and this one is called Despair Once More, Revival of the Evil Emperor Frieza. So, hmm, hmm, I wonder, oh, I wonder what could be happening in this episode. Anyway, so the first thing right off the bat to get into that I thought is very interesting is there's been some changes in the opening. The opening, it's still the same song, but uh, there's a couple changes I noticed. You see uh, Jacko or Jaco, the space cop or whatever. You see him uh, quickly in the shot with Bulma, Trunks, and Vegeta. Then uh, you see uh, Frieza and a couple of his soldiers and uh, you actually see a shot of Golden Frieza a little later in the opening. And then also in another section of the opening where before it had showed Goku and like the camera kind of like pans by a little bit and like a flash of red will go across Goku. And, you know, it was hinting originally at Super Saiyan guy Goku and stuff. Well, now that flash is blue and it's hinting at uh, Super Saiyan God Super Saiyan. And then the uh, last little shot at the end of the opening there is different, and it shows everyone in space, which is, you know, pretty cool. So this episode opens up pretty much in the same manner as the Resurrection of Frieza movie. Uh, we get a, a look at Hell, and we see Mecha Frieza being tortured, and, you know, Frieza's really not having a real good time there. Then it cuts back to Sorbet in his spaceship in space <laughs> and he's getting a report from one of his soldiers and he's telling him basically that they've lost the equivalent of 60 percent of their men and sorbet is like okay enough is enough we need to revive frieza we need to get momentum back we need to build the army back up uh so sorbet then asks like you know have we found where the new namekians have gone and like they say no so Sorbet then says, like, well, fuck, you know, we need to go to Earth, and we, we gotta give this a shot. Now, the others are hesitant, obviously, because, you know, Goku, Vegeta, Piccolo, everyone is on Earth, but Sorbet thinks that if they get in there, like, real sneakily with not a lot of people, uh, and not strong fighters, since their energy could be sensed, that they could maybe steal the Dragon Balls from someone. Uh, and Sorbet also does have some lines of dialogue mentioning how, like, after Frieza died, he was the one who kept the Frieza army afloat, which is actually a pretty uh, nice line of dialogue there, kind of explaining exactly why this whole, you know, galactic, you know, empire, essentially, organization was not, you know, shut down after Frieza died. While Sorbet is also explaining some things, uh, we do get a nice little beautiful... Uh, like, reanimation of the scene of when Frieza destroys planet Vegeta. You know, it's the iconic shot that is shown 25 times in Dragon Ball Z, where, you know, Frieza's laughing as, like, the particles of the planet are flying by, and it looks like, you know, like a big, you know, fireworks in space, basically. Uh, it looks pretty solid. At this point, it cuts to Goku and Vegeta still continuing their training with Whis, uh, Whis is still, you know, giving them the business, no surprise there. Uh, they land, and Whis actually goes over some of the points that he makes in the Resurrection of Frieza movie about how Vegeta is thinking too much, which is holding him back, and how Goku is too relaxed, which holds him back. And also, Whis walks up and just quick tags him real quick, and Goku, like, you know, is, you know, clutches his chest. And Whis is like, you know, you're too relaxed, even, you know, as strong as you are, that makes you unguarded, and you're too overconfident. Obviously, foreshadowing what's going to happen later. Uh, at this point, we're shown a scene where Piccolo is babysitting Pan. And, you know, he's having a good time and whatnot. And then Gohan and uh, Videl arrive back, and at that moment, Piccolo is like, huh, Nani? And, you know, he senses... Uh, what he describes as an unpleasant power that way. Now, this is a little annoying because what does Piccolo do? Oh no, I sense evil. I'm just going to stand here and I'm just going to say with Gohan, like, oh man, this unpleasant power. Not going to get off my fucking ass and go check it out. Then it cuts over and we see the Pilaf gang 
has, you know, collected uh, the six Dragon Balls, and they get their hands on the seventh when Sorbet and uh, his homeboy, what is it, Tacoma, they come in and steal the seven and summon Shenron. And, of course, as Shenron is summoned, you know, the sky goes dark, typical, you know, Dragon Ball, you know, lore here. So what happens? We cut back to Piccolo, and guess what? Piccolo and Gohan are like, oh shit, someone summoned the dragon. Does Piccolo get off his fucking ass yet? No. All right. So now we're moving on. And uh, Sorbet, you know, asks Shenron to revive Frieza. And this part is actually cool because Shenron, you know, explains how the body of Frieza was cut up long ago. And they actually show us the exact scene from Dragon Ball Z, which I do like. Like, rather than reanimate it, they're just showing us the the scene from you know Dragon Ball Z what was that that had to have been shown in like 1990 or 1991 like that scene is as old as I am this shit is crazy uh but Tacoma talks about how you know even if Frieza's brought back in pieces you know the way Frieza's able to survive anywhere obviously is a big factor in this like you know after Namek was destroyed he, basically he has half of a fucking head and he's still alive so I I can buy that he'll come back to life in pieces, but he probably won't live very long. But uh, I guess they are healing machines have probably advanced quite a lot in the what what has passed uh, ten maybe ten eleven twelve years something like that since uh, the battle on Namek, and so they go ahead with the wish. Freeze is revived in pieces. And now here's something I find fascinating. Shenron then tells them you have two more wishes. Now, they need to explain this in some detail because this is either a retcon or a mistake. Where Shenron, basically, he says uh, after the new Earth Guardian, now we're able to do three wishes. Like, I don't know if maybe the subtitles were wrong or what's going on, but Shenron is only able to grant two wishes that 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 that's what it is not three and shenron does go on and he says like you know if you use a wish such as reviving like an entire planet's population that's died that will use two wishes so this is it's a little odd i i think it, it could probably be just like a uh translation issue because that's like a pretty big thing to just kind of be like, oh, now all of a sudden Shenron can grant three wishes. It's like, wait, no, it was, it was always two. Shenron was two. Poronga, on the Namek Dragon, he could grant three. So I, I'm going to have to, you know, look more deep into that. At this point, you know, the Shenron mentions that there's two more wishes from the use, And uh, Shu and Mai wish for a million zenny. And then uh, Mai wishes... Wait, let me say it. Let me say Shu wishes for a million zenny, and then Mai wishes for the world's best ice cream. So that's all the wishes for the dragon. Uh, Sorbet, they pack up Frieza in like this little, you know, reviving container or whatever. And they go to get on the ship. And now this is fascinating. The camera pans out and you see the Namekian frog who had, it's obviously Captain Ginyu. You see the little frog kind of hopping, hopping around in the shadows and looking at the spaceship and, you know, looking intrigued. So it looks as though they're going to bring Captain Ginyu back in here, which I, th this is cool. That I would like that if, you know, we got to see Captain Ginyu because he has just been chilling on Earth the entire time since the, you know, the Namek saga. He was killed by Kid Boo when uh, Boo destroyed the planet or possibly he was destroyed when Boo did the human extinction attack, but obviously he got resurrected because I don't think when they made the wish, they put the qualifier, you know, only good people. I don't think they said that. I think they said just, you know, bring everyone back to life. So that would explain how Ginyu is still alive. And this could be a very, you know, cool plot line moving forward. So at this point, uh, Sorbet, they fuck off. They say, you know, they'll be back. And Piccolo, it cuts back to Piccolo, and he's like, oh boy, I've got a bad feeling about this. It's like, really, Piccolo? You got a bad feeling. Well, maybe you should have gotten off your ass and, and checked it out. Hello, Piccolo. <laughs> he just, oh man, unpleasant power. Oh, now they're summoning Shenron. Ah, fuck it. Or just, you know, fuck it. Whatever. So then it cuts up to uh, Sorbet, you know, 
they've got Frieza in like the real regeneration chamber. And it's interesting. He talks about what happened after Frieza died and like their galactic empire kind of crumbled a little bit. How there was rebellions and people tried to assume leadership and yada yada yada. And it does show a cool shot of a uh, first form Frieza. And then you see a shadow of Dodoria, Zarbon, and then the Ginyu Force. And then Tacoma says that he had seen Frieza before. And it shows a shot of him looking up and Frieza's talking with Dodoria and Captain Ginyu, which is pretty cool. Uh, then, you know, the, you know, Frieza walks out of the healing chamber, you know, completely revived in his first form, all good, and laughs. And then, uh, you know, dun dun dun, Frieza's back alive. And another thing I do like, I do like, you know, just quick shots of this. It cuts over to Goku, um, you know, doing chores on, on Beerus' planet. And he goes, huh, that's weird. Like, you know, like he senses something. Which obviously, like, come on, like, he his senses are not good enough from Beerus' planet to, like, you know, really, like, actually sense it's Frieza. But just more so, like, a bad feeling. Like, oh, that was weird. I just got a bad feeling right there. Like, I, I do kind of like uh, a shot like that. Then in the next episode preview, uh, we see a couple things that are interesting. You know, we see Frieza talking on the ship. Uh, Jacko, the space cop or whatever, we see him talking with Gohan and Goten and stuff. Also, it looks like uh, they show a shot of Master Roshi Tien and Bald Krillin. So it looks like the uh, like invasion, it might start at the end of the next episode. So they're moving quite quickly here. Also, most importantly... There is a shot of Goku and Vegeta training on Whis's, with Whis, and they punch each other, and then, like, this big wave of blue shines out, as though they're activating the new form of the Super Saiyan for the first time. So I'm very, very intrigued to see that.